Welcome to this service of the Des Moines United Methodist Church. This is the last Sunday of the year. Things have come to an end, and this is the Sunday when we need to say goodbye to Pastor Joanne. It has been quite a time for us with the COVID and everything that's going on. So things are a little bit different, but we will be having a drive-by later this afternoon at one o'clock. So if you are in the area, please drive by and give your goodbyes to Joanne. But now, let us begin our service. The good news we have proclaimed for this Advent Christmas season ends with the second chapter of Luke that starts, when the time came. Indeed, the time has come for us to move from the narrative of birthing to the narrative of redemption. The story of Jesus' ritual cleansing as a child contains stories of people who had been waiting for this moment. But the time of waiting is over for us too. Like Isaiah, who says, for Zion's sake, I won't stay silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I won't sit still. We will not stop our songs of resistance until justice shines out like a light for all. We thank you for the glimpses we have caught throughout this season of Advent and Christmas, of your gifts of hope, love, joy, and peace. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we have not been sure of tomorrow, you have ignited the light within us. And we have glowed with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us continue to proclaim far and wide that the time has come for our light to be among all people. Amen. You are invited to light all your Advent and Christmas candles at this time.
Hello, my name is Terry, and I welcome you to Time with Young People. I really am so happy you chose to spend time with us today. I hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas. I know this year your celebration might have been different from your usual tradition, but I hope it was still a joyous day filled with celebration and love. What about the day after Christmas? How did you spend that day? For some people, it is a day for rest or family activities, playing games, or with your new toys that you got for Christmas. Did you know that December 26th has another name? It is also known as the Feast Day of St. Stephen. There is a fairly well-known Christmas carol that talks about something special that happened once on the Feast of St. Stephen. Does anyone know what song I'm referring to? Good King Wenslaw. In the carol, we hear about how King Wenslaw went was out on the day after Christmas, the day of the Feast of Stephen. It was very cold, and he saw a poor man gathering wood for a fire in his house to keep his family warm. Do you remember what happened next? The king asked his page to get food and drink to take to the family. While they were walking through the snow to get to the family's house, the page became very tired. The king walked ahead so that the page could follow in his footsteps, making the journey much easier for him. Many of us know the song, but there is more to the story of King Wenceslas. He was a real man. He was born a prince in the year 924 in a country called Bohemia, which is now known as the Czech Republic. When his father died, Wenceslas was supposed to become the king, but he was very young. His grandmother feared that he would be killed, so she sent him to live with some monks in a monastery. As he grew up there, Wenceslas learned about Jesus and what it meant to be a Christian. Meanwhile, evil people took over the country. When Wenceslas eventually returned from the monastery, he was very upset to see that many people were very poor and going hungry. When he became the king, he tried to rule in ways that showed his Christian faith, and he encouraged people to be loving and sharing. Eventually, his enemies had him killed. But the people remembered the good king who had shown them how to live in God's way. And people remember him still, more than a thousand years later. In the city of Prague, in the Czech Republic, there is a large statue of him and a section of the city, Wenceslas Square, is named after him. And at Christmas time, people throughout the world sing the song about good King Wenceslas and try like him, to live out the good news of God's love. So even though his enemies had him killed, Wenceslas lived on, in a way, thanks to the way he lived his life. Some people don't like to hear stories like this at Christmas time. They feel that it is a downer or a buzzkill. But while we are feeling the joy of the Christmas season, we need to remember that all stories and all lives have sad parts. Let's not be the kind of people who avoid the sad parts of life in order to be happy. Let's be like good King Wenceslas, who tried to comfort and heal those sad parts. That way, while we are feeling joyful over the birth of Jesus, we can also feel joy from the knowledge that we are living in God's way. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. Woo! I surely rejoice in the Lord. My heart is joyful because of my God, because he has clothed me with clothes of victory, wrapped me in a robe of righteousness, like a bridegroom in a priestly crown, and like a bride adorned in jewelry. As the earth puts out its growth, and as a garden grows its seeds, so the Lord God will grow righteousness and praise before all the nations. 
For Zion's sake, I won't keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I won't sit still until her righteousness shines out like a light and her salvation blazes like a torch. Nations will see your righteousness, all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name, which the Lord's own mouth will determine. You will be a splendid garland in the Lord's hand, a royal turban in the palm of God's hand. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the people who made our music possible for this Advent and Christmas season. Choir videos, David Davenport. Singers, David Davenport. Tana Davenport. Bev Hornish and Dennis Brown. Pianist, Mark Cooley. Someday we will once again be able to join our voices in song in our sanctuary, loud and clear. But with the help of all these people, we turned toward the story of music and deepened our appreciation of its role in healing, change, and reconciliation. And we will never look at music the same again. Certainly, we will not take it for granted. Our last anthem for this series is one that reminds us that there is work for us to do. After the Christmas carols have faded, and we move on towards some sense of new life, we will have much to do to continue to re rebuild lives. African-American theologian Howard Thurman said, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back in their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Oh, 
When the time came for their ritual cleansing, in accordance with the law from Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It's written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what's stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepare the salvation in the presence of all peoples. It's a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that, generations, that generates opposition to that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 83-year-old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshiped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had completed everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown, Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew up and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. Can you imagine having a vision that you were to await the Messiah's arrival, then actually waiting around in the temple for decade after decade to see this promise fulfilled? This is a story of Simeon this is the reality of Anna, two righteous followers of God who were willing to wait as long as it took for God's promise to come true. What if their patience was a role model for us as we await the resolution of this global pandemic? When we first heard of this strange new virus last winter, very few of us imagined we would still be worried about it a year later. Yet here we are, 2020 coming to a close, and still we wait. We wait to see how the vaccine will be equitably distributed. We wait to see if the flu season will worsen the situation in the coming months. We wait to see if numbers will rise or fall. In North America, we also wait for relief for the many areas that had suffered natural disasters in 2020. We wait for unity and calm to reappear in the midst of so much national unrest. We wait for economic stability that seems constantly out of reach 
for so many of our people. We wait and we wonder. We likely worry and grieve. We wish for something different. Most of us are not in love with waiting. Waiting can be hard. Waiting can be frustrating. Waiting can feel exhausting. Waiting can be discouraging. Hard as these lessons may be, waiting has much to teach us. It has many gifts to give. And the role models that Simeon and Anna offer may reveal those gifts to us. Simeon looked forward to the consolation of his nation. His anticipated hope had not yet arrived. The Holy Spirit rested on him, and he allowed the Spirit to guide him. Anna worshipped without ceasing, never leaving the temple. She fasted and prayed night and day. Hope and anticipation guided Simeon's steps. Worship and prayer guided Anna's. Their patterns were different, yet both patterns were guided by God. Perhaps if each of us can find a way to allow God to guide us through the days of our lives, however short or long they may be, we too can find patience in the waiting. For some, hope and anticipation will help us wait with patience. For others, worship and prayer help us to wait with patience. And in that patience, we may find God's presence revealed to us or not. But even then, there are lessons to be learned in the void. Scripture is full of those lessons. The wait may be long, but in the patience and persistence, Anna and Simeon were ready to see God when God was revealed to them in the young child of Jesus. In patience and persistence, we too can find ourselves ready to receive God's promises and God's presence whenever they arrive, however long the wait may be. Discerning is part of waiting. When I was wondering what direction I should go after college, I walked all over campus trying to find my answers. My plan when entering college was to be a doctor, but now that didn't feel right. Then I thought law. But again, it didn't feel comfortable. I was offered a teaching job, but again, that nagging kept at me. I wanted someone to tell me what I should do, but no one did. All those people who told me I would make a great minister came flooding back to me. But still unsure, I did something I hadn't done before or since. I made a bargain with God. I applied to one seminary, and after the deadline, if I was supposed to be a minister, I would get in. Well, not only did I get in, I also got the presidential scholarship, so I had to go. <laughs> now, as I am ending my 45 years of active ministry, it is still a matter of being open to God's presence and promises. God has called me to a different ministry, being retired and focus on my physical and emotional health. It was not an easy decision to come to. I love what I do. I love you all and the welcome you extended to me when I first came. And while I couldn't keep my promise of staying until 2025, I do feel God's presence in this decision. And as Simeon and Anna were waiting and ready to see God's presence, even when it appeared in an unexpected way, a baby of poor parents. We all need to be open to God's promises and presence in unexpected things and people. We are all starting a new journey in the midst of uncertainty, and we could be anxious and questioning and nervous. The theme of this first Sunday of Christmas is I believe the time has come. The time has come for me to say goodbye to you in love and blessing, in the confidence that you individually and as a church family 
will grow in love and faithfulness. Always remember to believe even when. Vaya con Dios. In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps even when our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it is an important act to call out, name and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, name and claim our belief that hope, love, joy, and peace are what we are born for and are possible in our world. I believe that we have failed to see Jesus and I, I believe that, that we, we can, can wake up and serve, serve him by serving him. others. I believe that we have waited for someone else to rescue us and I, I believe that, that we, we can be the change we, we want to see. I believe that we have hidden the light for too long, and I believe that the light can shine whenever we open ourselves to be Christ's presence in the world. We believe even when we are discouraged. We believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will offer more hope, more love, more joy, more peace, and more light. Amen. I invite you to get in a comfortable position of rest. I invite you to get as quiet and still as you can. I invite you to a deep breath and a deep listening posture, perhaps eyes closed or fixed on a candle as we prepare for a time of prayer.
We pray for our country as over a quarter million of our brothers and sister Americans have died of the COVID virus. And for those suffering from illness and their families and friends who feel this deeply. We pray for people in our church who are ill in the process of passing, who are grieving a deep personal loss, and those who are the caring angels in our midst. We pray for the new administration who is preparing to take the reins of government, that they may govern justly and with compassion. We pray for those affected by natural and human created disasters, those who have been killed or injured, buried under rubble, and the rescuers digging through the rubble, and for all those whose lives have been irrevocably changed. We thank you for angels among us, for the comfort you give us in the midst of uncertainty. sanctuary is full of folks here to be part of your last worship service at Des Moines United Methodist Church. And after you've shared the benediction and Mark has played the postlude, we're all going downstairs for a good old-fashioned Methodist potluck lunch, topped off by a huge sheet cake, all beautifully decorated. Hold on to that because that's what we'd all like to be doing. But instead, I get to be the messenger to share with you how much we appreciate and value what you have brought to Des Moines United Methodist Church in the time that you have served our church. You have brought great caring, compassion, you have brought a sense of humor, and you have so liberally shared your rich, deep, academic, theological knowledge, which you know me, I just love <coughs> to hear. It feels bittersweet because it's sooner than we all had hoped for, for sure. But on the other hand, we're celebrating the opportunity that you can enter into your retirement next year and have time and energy for some of the things that taking such great care of us as our pastoral leader, you were able to do. So I just have a very small token <laughs> of kind of fun things, um, good English tea and Scottish shortbread biscuits for yes. an afternoon pick-me-up, and a little bubbly and uh, crackers and cheese for your evening. So, and a, a little surprise in our car. So thank you very much. And do you want me I to just say? I'll take, take it. it. There you go. Oh, thank you so much. And I wish we could hug, but we'll just be a virtual hug. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lynn. Um, it has been my delight and my joy to work with the folks at Des Moines United Methodist Church and to do ministry with you folks. Um, I know I've said this before, but it'll be the last maybe time I say. When people have asked me, have I, ever, have I had any joy in my life these last three years that have been so stressful, the only response I can give is that I was appointed to Des Moines United Methodist Church. 
it has made what was a very hard time in my life much better because of your everybody's caring and faithfulness uh, and willingness, willing to let me do some weird things and, and go with the flow um, and not to tell me, oh, but we've always done it this way before. <laughs> um, so I, I wish blessings on all of you for your continued ministry in this area and in the world uh, and to each other. Um, and I want to thank you all so much for welcoming me, for making, and for healing me in many ways. Um, it has truly been a blessing to be here. The only thing I overlooked putting in there, there's no biscuit for Bridget. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> she, she has so much. Um, yeah, she's there's got, so she's got biscuits that. and, you know, um, <laughs> the vet is on my case because she's <laughs> chunky. <laughs> and uh, so I'm trying to, but you've got doggy things in here, so that's yes. good. Yes. So behind this mask, which unfortunately isn't very shareable, there's a big smile. Oh. And in my eyes, there's a little bit of tears welling up. So I'm just going to end it now and say thank okay. you. Again, thank you.
grateful heart Believe and shine your light Believe because the song we sing is sung for all And now let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say I am rich Because of what our God has done for us Believe the, This carol was written in 1962 by Noel Regney and Gloria Shane at the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, inspired by seeing babies pushed in strollers in New York City while the dire threat of nuclear war loomed. Noel wrote, said the night, to, night wind to the little lamb, and pray for peace, people everywhere. The star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite can be interpreted as the star of Bethlehem but also what a nuclear missile looks like in flight. The composer said in an interview later that it was difficult to actually sing the song that year without crying. Indeed, our prayers for peace continue and the need to protect the children of the world and secure a future for them are as dire as ever. As the last song in our series, let us sing this carol of resistance a song high above the trees with our voices big as the sea. Thank you for planting the seeds of God in all of us. And it's been our absolute joy to work with you. <laughs> Thank you for everything. You're amazing. And not only have you been a wonderful pastor, but you've been a great friend to all of us. And I wish you nothing but happiness in your retirement. Thank you, Kathy. It's, it's been the best staff I've ever worked with. Um, folks were dedicated to what they were doing, but had fun. 
um, and rose to the challenges of working in this COVID time. And you have been a blessing in my life. And all of you have been my friends, and I love you all. This is the last Sunday that you are with us. And we wanted to do something special. Unfortunately, having a potluck <laughs> and a gathering down in the fellowship is not gonna happen. So we have gathered cards and messages from all the congregation that have been sent here for you and a bouquet of flowers to wish you well in your retirement and to let you know how very much we are gonna miss having you here. There also will be this, this afternoon a drive-by, so we will have you out in front of the church and people will drive by and wave and wish you well, respecting the distancing that we are supposed to be doing today. So again, on behalf of the congregation, thank you so much for being here. We so love you and wish you well in your retirement. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love all of you, and I have loved my time here. And it's bittersweet to be ending today. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that we believe that good will prevail, fill the night left by sadness with light. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that goodness alive in you. And that, you, and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do, Do not, not be afraid. afraid. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Mark here with, um, I'm really excited about this Christmas postlude I get to play for you. It translates as toy soldiers. And through the genius of this composer, I can hear them marching out of the toy box in the very first measure on their patrol of the living room. I would respectfully suggest that they have a number of encounters, including uh, perhaps a rumba on the carpet, uh, the cat several times. I think at one point they, uh, they get on board a toy train, take a little tour, and then they have to be very quiet not to wake the baby before they go marching victoriously back to the toy chest. Enjoy. <laughs> 